The Churches of Christ presents Speaking the Truth in Love, a program bringing you life's answers from the Word of God. My name is Brock Kendall, and I am the preacher at the Broadway Street Church of Christ in Mark Tree, Arkansas. It is such a privilege to be with you today, and I hope you'll study the Bible with me today as we see and as we focus on the name of Christ. Turn with me in your Bibles just real quick to the book of Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 1. The book of Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 1. And then I want you to mark that with one of your fingers and then turn over to Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 through 11. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. The Proverbs writer states, A good name is rather to be chosen than that of great riches, and loving favor rather than silver and gold. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11, Let this mind be in you, watch this, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, that's Christ, being in the form of God, thought it not robber to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found, fa being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, notice this, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus Christ every knee should bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I want to submit unto you today, my friends, that a reputation, your reputation, my reputation, has more value than any possession or any wealth. You know, a good name, it cannot be easily, easily replaced by money or wealth or possession. Not a good name. Not from what the Pro Proverbs writer, uh, writer states here and from what Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 through 11 teaches. You know, many will tell you in the religious world today that there's nothing in a name. It, it doesn't matter what one names the church. It doesn't matter what, one name, uh, what, what name one calls himself. But you see, when a person says this, they are admitting that they do not have a biblical name. My friends, if there is nothing in a name, why is it that people are so sensitive 
about the calling of a name. If there's nothing in a name, why are people so sensitive about the name? My friends, why, if there's nothing in a name, does the religious world cling to denominational names with such persistence and determination to get their name out there for it to be known? Have you ever heard someone say, I I am a Baptist or I am a Methodist or I am a Presbyterian or, or, or any other religious organization? My friends, people in the world might not admit it, but a lot of people in this world know that there is something in a name because a lot of people put a lot into it. I want to look at three points with you this morning from the book of Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11, from that which we have already read. Number one, I want us to see that there is no name greater than Jesus Christ. Then we're going to look at the name that children of God wear, that is the name Christian. And then we're going to see that there is salvation and no other name than Jesus Christ. So let's look at our first point from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. See, the Bible says that at the name of whom? The name of Jesus. That at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee, no one excluded, but every knee should bow, whether things on heaven or earth or under earth, but every knee will bow before that name, Jesus Christ. Why that name? Because God has highly, we're talking about the creator of the world, God has highly exalted that name above every other name, and there is no name like the name of Jesus Christ. My friends, whether we believe in Jesus Christ this morning, whether we want to accept what Jesus Christ has said, whether we want to obey His will, whether we want to do what He says, if we want to go our own way, that's fine. But no matter what, my friends, we will have to stand and bow before Jesus Christ someday. We cannot escape that. The judgment day is impossible. The Bible says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Every single person is going to die when this life, or when, when it's their time. And we're going to have to bow before Jesus Christ. My friends, in the religious world, those who call themselves Christians, if you call yourself a Christian, as I call myself a Christian, I want you to think of some things with me just for a minute about this name Christ. You know, many are ashamed of the name of Christ and simply prefer to wear another name, of mere men maybe. You see, God ordained this one name. God said He highly exalted this name to be above every name. Philippians 2, 9, the Bible says, Wherefore God has highly exalted Him and given Him a name which is above all. I want you just for a moment to write down on a sheet of paper the greatest names that you can think of. Write down the President of the United States. Maybe you can write down Superman, the role models, the heroes that you can think of. All those names which you look up to. Maybe professional athlete, whoever it may be. I want you to write down the greatest names that you love to hear and those that you have looked up to for so long. Now compare those names with that of Jesus Christ. God has given the name of Jesus Christ the name above every name. Why is that? What what does that have to do anything with me? How does that fit in with my salvation? What does that have to do with my relationship to God? My friends, Christ is God in the flesh. Christ is God in the flesh. You see, Christ rules over everyone. Christ rules over everything. You see, Jesus' glorious brightness comes from being divine, set apart, unlike any other. The Bible teaches in in John 1.1, In the beginning was the Word, that's Christ, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You see, the Son, Jesus Christ, my friends, is the exact representation of God's being because why? He is God Himself, Hebrews chapter 1, 1 through 4. Jesus Christ alone and no one else is capable of providing you salvation and, and, and capable of providing you sanctification. Giving these mind-blogging facts about Christ from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11, from what we see there, why would we look anywhere else for a name? Why would we settle to be called anything else? Or why would we settle to be under the authority of anyone else? I want you to consider Colossians chapter 1, verse 18, what Paul told the church at Colossae in regard to Christ and His divinity and His preeminence. The Bible says, and He is the head of the body, Christ. What is the body? He's the head of the body of the church. Christ, that name, which is highly exalted above every other name, is the head of the body, the church. You see that? Who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead? Now notice, that in all things He might have the preeminence. How many things, my friends? Not some, 
not a little bit, but that he has preeminence over all things. It doesn't matter what you have if you've heard anything different from anyone else and someone has told you anything other than what Christ has told you, my friends, they're wrong and they'll have to stand on the judgment day and bow before Christ, the name that is highly exalted above every name, someday as well as you will. And we need to take that in consideration. My friends, Christ is the head of His own body. Christ is the head of His church. The body is the church. And no one not a person in this world, in the religious world especially, underestimate the significance of the church. Why? Because it's Christ's body. The sovereign creator of this universe as the head of the church is the leader of the church. I'm going to be, I, I, I submit to you today, my friends, that Jesus Christ has a name that is above every name. And we need to accept that even today. In, in Colossians 1.18, the Bible tells us that Christ, we need to make Christ preeminent in everything. So we see that the name Christ is that which is above every name. I want you to notice also the name that the children of God wear. What name do you wear? As in, in the religious world, many will, will call themselves different things or different cults or from different denominations or from different creeds or, or whatever it may be. Maybe names that originated from man and they put the name Christian into it as well involved with the other man-made names. But I want you to think of this name that the children of God wear. We're talking about the name that God has given His people. In Acts chapter 11 verse 26, the Bible teaches that the disciples, those are followers of Jesus Christ, were called Christians in Antioch. Those Christians were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. You go back to Acts chapter 2. Those people that heard what Peter was saying, they repented of their sins. They were baptized for the remission of their sins. The Lord added them to His church. And in Acts chapter 11, 26, those disciples that obeyed the gospel were called Christians first at Antioch. Well, what are we talking about here? This is no doubt a fulfillment of Isaiah chapter 62 and verse 2. The Bible says in a long ago from Isaiah, And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, and all the kings thy glory, and thou shalt be called by a new name which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Who? The Lord shall name. My friends, this name that Christians wear, the name Christian, that belongs to Christ. I'm not ashamed, my friends, to be called a Christian. I'll tell anyone that I am a Christian. Why? Because that name was not given in derision or mockery. That name simply means, I belong to Christ. I belong to the Savior of the world. I belong to the one who brings life. I belong to the one who brings peace and joy and fulfillment and sense in this life. That is why I wear the name Christian. I, I, I wear the name Christian because God has highly exalted Christ above everyone. Because He is my authority. He is my judge. Therefore, I'm going to wear the name that He gives me. And I'm going to forsake all, all else. And I don't care what anyone else wants to be called because I want to be called a Christian. Don't you? That's what we should want. You see, in 1 Peter chapter 4, 16, I want you to notice what Peter says. The Bible says, Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, watch, let him not be ashamed. You hear that? Peter says, Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. But let him glorify God in that name. Can you imagine? Let him glorify God in the name Christian. My friends, That's all, any other name cannot glorify God. You can't glorify God in the name Baptist. You cannot glorify God in the name Methodist or Presbyterian or for some uh, man-made name that a man has come up with. The name we ought to glorify God is the name Christian. In the church, as the body of Christ, as the kingdom of God, as the vineyard of the Lord, as the temple of God, as the house of God, as the church of God, as the churches of Christ, is to whom we belong, just as the Bible speaks. We have no reason, my friends, to be ashamed because we are doing the will of the Lord. You know, people go to Tunica, people go to Las Vegas, and they gamble. And they gamble their money away, and then they come home, and now they're suffering. For what? Greed? They're suffering over something that, that they can lose in just moments or just a blink of an eye. Money? Is that what we're talking about? People suffer for that? My friends, the suffering in and of itself does not produce the blessing. The suffering that we do as Christians produces a blessing because the end will be far better. 
anything that happens to me, if I'm living faithfully to my Lord, if I'm a member of His church, His body, through faith, repentance, confession, and baptism, I wear that name Christian. If I'm walking in the light, as John talks about in 1 John 1, 7 through 9, if I confess my sins daily, the suffering is worth it. If we suffer as a man-made name, then we're not suffering for Christ. If we suffer like Christ did, we're going to be glorified with Him. Let me give you an example. Have you ever heard of a name of a church called the Christian Church? Someone would say, well, I'm a member of the Christian Church. Well, for what? I have to ask the question, why? Because the Bible uses the word Christian to describe the child, not the institution. The word Christian is used three times in Scripture, Acts 11, 26, Acts 26, 28, and 1 Peter 4, 16. We are to glorify God in the name Christian and none other. I wonder if the Lord will be satisfied if we were to call ourselves anything else. There is salvation, my friends, and no other name other than Christ, Acts 4, 12. The Bible says there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. That name, Jesus Christ, is exclusive. It excludes every other name. It excludes the names like Muhammad. It excludes the name like Buddha. It excludes the name like Joseph Smith. It excludes the name like John Calvin or Charles Russell. It doesn't matter. It excludes those names, those names because Jesus Christ has been highly exalted above every name. When you were baptized, to what name were you baptized into? The Bible teaches, or Jesus told His disciples in Matthew 20, 18 through 20, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, watch this, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the end of the world. If it does not make any difference, my friends, about the name, would you want to be baptized in just to any name? Suppose I would take you out to a river somewhere and I was to baptize you in the name of Adolf Hitler. What would you say? Oh, well, that you would say no. You wouldn't want to be baptized into the name of Adolf Hitler. You, my, my friends, the name makes a difference. To whose name we are baptized into, it makes a big difference. We are baptized into the name of Christ when we are baptized by His authority. Paul had a major problem. The Apostle Paul had a major problem at the church at Corinth with division. In 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 1, beginning in verse 12, the Bible says this, Now this I say, that, that every one of you saith, saith, I am of Paul, and I am of Apollos, and I am of Cephas, and I am of Christ. Paul says, Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you, or were you baptized in the name of Paul? Paul had to correct this division by telling them the only name that you have a right to wear is the name into which you were baptized. You are to wear the name into which you are baptized. And my friends, we have no right to wear any other name. For instance, there's, there's no significance in a lot of religious names for churches. I drive around town and I see churches named Holiness Church. Why? That's a virtue. That's not the name that we ought to name the church. What about Love Church or Peace Church or Joy Church? You see all different kinds of names for churches, Pentecostal Church, Methodist Church, Baptist Church. Why? Why name the churches, these, church, uh, these churches, when it's nowhere found in Scripture? I want to bear the name Christ because He's the one that died for it. Listen, if I was to die for a church and I was to have preeminence over all things, and I was to say, listen, this is my church, the church better be named the, name, the church of Brock Kendall. That's what I would want the name, or that is what I would want the church to be named. I wonder how Christ feels as He sat at the right hand throne of God and He sees that men are calling churches all different things and putting different doctrines and different ways of salvation into it and going away from what the Scriptures teach and telling people what, they, what, what feels good to them and what they want to hear and pushing that on them when Christ is sitting there wanting the world to be saved. But the only way to do it is in the gospel. That's it. You ever heard of the church called the Church of Nazarene? My friends, the church was not called the church of Nazarene in the Bible. Yes, Jesus was a Nazarene, but the church was not called Nazarene. You might say Brock Kendall of Arkansas, but Arkansas is not my name. I am from Arkansas, but that's not my name. The Baptist Church. Let me tell you about the Baptist Church for just a minute. This name was not applied to any religious organization 
or any religious people until the 16th century. Did you know that? Those that are members of the Baptist church. The Baptist church was not applied to any religious people until the 16th century. And there is no reference to the Baptist church in the Bible. Why would you want to bear that name and why would you want to be a part of it? Jesus said, if, uh, for as many as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. The Baptist church, a lot of the Baptist churches teach that you don't have to be baptized to be saved, that it's not essential to be saved. Jesus has already said we must be baptized to be saved. Focus on Christ. Christ is not popular in this world. Christians are not popular in this world. No man in the Bible whose name was Baptist. You think about Luke 1.13. The Bible says, But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and watch this, and thou shalt call his name John. In John 1.6, the Bible says, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Now let's notice this for a minute. A lot of people, the Baptist church in a lot of ways uh, calls their name after John the Baptist. But John the Baptist here is contrasted with Jesus Christ. Jesus is God in the flesh. Jesus sits at the right hand throne of God. Jesus is the one to whom we have to bow. John was a man sent from God to, to bear witness of the light, Jesus Christ. John has nothing, uh, nothing, com he's nothing compared to that of Jesus Christ. He just brought it into, he, he was, the, uh, he was b bearing light for the light to actually come, Jesus. John, did, John the Baptist did not establish the church, and there are many in our world today who assume this and take on the name Baptist. There's a great body of, there's a great body of people today, my friends, that name their whole church after water baptism, Baptist, for instance. And do not even believe that baptism is essential. Listen to me, my friends. I, I love you and I care about you, so I want to tell you, if you've ever heard or ever heard anyone say that all you have to do is accept the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart and that's all you have to do to be saved, or say the sinner's prayer and that's all you have to do to be saved, listen to me. It's nowhere found in Holy Writ. It's nowhere there. Jesus says, For as many as been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Galatians 3.27 and we're all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus, for as many of us have been baptized. In 1 Peter chapter 3, in verse 21, the Bible says, Baptism saves us, not to putting away the filth of the flesh, but an answer of a good conscience toward God. Someone would say, you're telling me I have to go in water and be dipped. That is what saves me? No, the water is not saving you, my friends. The blood of Christ is that which saves you. And the obedience to God's will. Many will teach that, listen, you don't have to be baptized, but Jesus said you do. There's not a person standing today, there's not a person that will ever see the gates of heaven that has not been baptized. We must be baptized for the remission of our sins. All these names, my friends, are human. Presbyterian, Baptist, Methodist, Catholic, Lutheran. Please do the research on these denominations. Because there's so many out there. Do your research on them and make sure that it's the church that Jesus built in AD 33 in Jerusalem because the Baptist church didn't come into existence until 1607 or 1609. Okay, and, and these other institutions didn't come along until way after the church of Christ was established. I am a member of the church of Christ, my friends, because it was founded on the scriptural builder Christ. And he bears the name of it. He should bear the name of it. If you're not a Christian through faith, Repentance, confession, and baptism, the Lord will add you to His church, and you will bear that name Christian. Live faithfully unto God unto death. Revelations 2.10. Thank you for your undivided time.
If you'd like a free DVD of today's lesson, have a Bible question, would like to receive a free Bible correspondence course, or would like a copy of the two free books, Why I'm a Member of the Church of Christ and Basic Bible Lessons, please contact the Nettleton Church of Christ, Post Office Box 2216, Jonesboro, Arkansas, 72402. Email at nettletonch at yahoo.com. The Nettleton Congregation has a free substance abuse program meeting each Thursday at 7 p.m. Please contact us for more information. Speaking the Truth in Love is brought to you each time by these area churches of Christ. When the Lord for mercy prays.